Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Navy Dad, this is Rustic Bolts Garage, and remember the brass tack, it melted. But, taut. Okay. Yeah, it's still bloody hell hot. Anyway, uh, this is part two of getting the rest of the engine stand put together and firing up the big block. Oh, and it's wicked. <laughs> so let's get back to the uh, to the engine stand and then we'll get to the firing up part. <laughs> okay, so first of all, is this overkill? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Did I go too far with this? Of course, that's just kind of my thing. I just over engineer everything because well it's fun <laughs> I mean, it just is so basically it's Starbuck Apollo and a Viper's fault no not the car not the coffee and not the moon launch Battlestar Galactica the original one when I was a little kid come on getting in the Viper hitting all those switches listening to turbines fire up hitting that button and taking off through that chute I was mesmerized as a little kid with all the buttons and switches and stuff and that's why I've gone crazy with buttons and switches pretty much anything I mean like here's a couple of little quickie samples and then of course Star Wars what happens the first one the hyperdrive doesn't work Chewie's running around like crazy buttons switches relays everything so cool then what else is next Oh yeah, Back to the Future. <laughs> Can't forget the flux capacitor. Flux capat. Say that three times fast. The flux freaking capacitor in the DeLorean. I mean, come on. So yeah, I've uh, I've done some overkill on, on, on a lot of my builds. Now the one thing you do when you're building something like this is check your circuits as you're going. Make sure everything works. Um, I did have something screw up, and I could not figure it out. Um, <laughs> we went to start the thing, turned on switch. And it was nothing. Zippo. Looked at, I, I was checking all the wires. I was checking everything. It's like, okay, it worked perfectly yesterday. I checked it multiple times. And you go over it and you go over it and you go over it. And it's like, th there's nothing wrong with the wiring. It's all good. It was a fuse. It was a cheap Chinese fuse that came with this thing. It was literally, I mean, hair thin. Uh, and, and it blew. Threw a new fuse in it, fired right up okay so anyway let's get to this and I just kind of again I'm just gonna briefly go over what I did and I'm not putting together a diagram because like I said you can go to Google and just put it in and you're gonna find hundreds of diagrams for engine stands so it, it's just you, you what I tell you I'm, I'm just telling you what I did that's it so okay this thing um, Amazon, of course, and uh, a lot of people complained about these little LED lights not working. They worked for a little while and then they stopped working. <laughs> so, uh, but the, the rest of it is, uh, it works fine, so I don't care about these stupid little LED lights. And of course, these um, cheap Chinese switches, this one went bad, yes, after, after that failed, got it all hooked up and it worked one time and the switch actually broke on the inside. So I had to replace the switch. <laughs> All right, so here's what we have. First, I'm gonna go over just kind of the wiring real quick. So I did also make this to where, because yeah, as you see, you know, this, this all comes apart. So I made it so it's really easy to disconnect everything. And when it's not in use, I can literally fold it down, put it flat and, you know, roll it under a, a workbench or whatever. But I ran the wiring, as you can see, down around here. Um, this is for the starter, and you can see it's, 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 it's wrapped up multiple times because I didn't want it to burn on the header. Um, and then that's the front of the starter right there. I have it double grounded going all the way up here, and I have it grounding out to the uh, top of the alternator where I have another ground going to right here. That's, that's the, uh, the main ground from the battery. So everything is grounded. I mean, we're talking hard grounding here. Um, Overgrounded, probably, <laughs> but that's okay. You can never really overground something. Um, now, down here, this is for the alternator, and I just put in a hundred amp, you know, in case I didn't know if that alternator was any good, 
you know, if it's overcharging or, or whatever. So this is just a um, 100 amp, um, which I think it's actually a, a 95 amp that's in there. Uh, and, you know, if it exceeds that, it'll pop that, right? Then I have my master power. Everything goes through there. Um, and then we'll go over to the other side here real quick. There's my master grounding block. Where everything is grounded to directly to the battery. And again, here's the other side on this. Here, let me just. Uh, these are Amazon. I'll, I'll put the link, you know, in the description because I like these. I've, I've used these several times now, and shit. Um, and then you've, you've got different screw holes and stuff like that, so you can put a lot of stuff in here, and it's it's really pretty pretty good. Um, I haven't had any issues. I've had the I've had one in the Tahoe for probably about seven eight years. In one in old blue for, for at least five years now. Uh, and then of course the same thing here with that. And I just bolted these down. Okay, so this is master circuit breaker. And basically it's master on off switch. It's a, uh, I think it's actually made for marine. It's a hundred amp and that's, that's on, off, on. And that basically controls everything here. So, if I have a problem or whatever, I just tap that with my foot and it shuts everything down. So um, now we'll kind of go over what we got going on here. So I've got two relays. This relay right here does two things. It is the starter relay, so it's momentary, right? When you start that, it, this is a five post relay. After the engine started, right, you don't have to use this. So I take 87A, and it goes to the fan. So that just saved me from having to wire up a secondary relay. Now this relay is the ignition. So uh, this switch right here, these are kind of cool. These, these switches stay lit when there's power to them in red, meaning that they're off. And then they go when they go green, uh, it means they're on. So that's ignition, okay? And that goes over to, um, this little distribution box right here and this goes to the distributor and then also it has an electric choke on it so I went ahead and hooked it up and then of course that's the tack and everything else is you know this is just wired the how-to that came with the uh, with the gauges so it's pretty simple and again I, I know you're probably going oh man I, I want more I want more but it's, it's just there are so many ways of doing these things that uh, you know my way might not be the best because I will tell you what I discovered I haven't never built one of these things before. Their mistake was made. <laughs> let's let's go to the other side. So when you see the uh, pictures of this, um, you know, from Summit Racing and that kind of stuff, the pictures, the instruction, this pan is right here, right? And they got the battery and a fuel cell there. Well, I actually wish I could have bought another pan because what I would have done is I would have put the battery back here and I would have left the fuel cell up here. I kind of don't like having the two of them together <laughs> for obvious reasons. And maybe I should have flipped them around a little bit, but because all the electronics on this engine, starter wire, all that stuff, is on this side of the engine, it didn't make sense. But what could happen? Fuel could leak on a battery. Water on a battery. <laughs> so it's just one of those things you've got to be really, really careful with. Um, make sure you don't have any fuel leaks. Um, cover that if you need to. And I thought about even taking some metal and, and just moving it back there. And someday, you know, depending on how much I use this thing, I, I may actually do that, is, is put another tray of some type or just put a piece of metal over here and move the battery back there. Because um, it's not that close to the headers, so it, it really is not going to hurt anything. I put it in the middle and then run all the electronics where close to the electronics. So, um, you know, except for the fact that you, of course, you have all that, but you can run all of that information up to the, um, you know, on the side and, and away from things that could leak and cause fires. Because <laughs> we did have a little issue, I'll show you. I mean, there's always something, right? This cheap Amazon fuel cell, it, it's kind of a pain in the ass. It, it was very difficult to get it from stop leaking. So, um, we finally did, but you know, you gotta be, you just gotta be so careful with this kind of stuff when you buy it from cheap sources. I mean, it was 86 bucks or $89, right? You get it, same thing at some, it's like 250 bucks. So it's, it's kind of one of those things that you, you gotta, you gotta pick your battle, so to speak. And cheap was my battle. <laughs> now, the other thing is, again, uh, these gauges, uh, 
you might note that doesn't match this one anymore because the the plastic tube on this was so crappy it literally and we had it wrapped with a piece of fuel line and it literally melted inside the fuel line and it was you know far enough away from the header like this it wasn't touching it and we ran the engine for probably 35 40 minutes got it up to full temperature but about 10 minutes in all of a sudden there's oil spewing everywhere we shut it down what happened melted the oil on oh and so we just plugged it up because at that point this thing fired up 55 pounds of oil pressure yeah and I'll get I'll get later to the um, compression numbers and all that one I uh, talk about the motor here in a little while and we'll, we'll finish up the, the stand here so uh, but anyway so be really careful when you set up something like this especially if you're getting this stuff from you know China's on right I mean some of it's good some of it's bad it says made in Taiwan you are golden uh, now the radiator <laughs> Well, let, let, let's get to the radiator here real quick and I'll, I'll show you what I had to do because this may affect you no matter what uh, radiator and set up, a fan setup that you use. So here we go. I'm not going to show you all the ins and outs of doing this because you may choose a completely different radiator and fan setup yourself. So if you're building one of these things. So, but I'll tell you what, what I have here. So first of all, this is from a 2000 Dodge Ram 1500 V8. I think it was a 360. And the radiator looked like it might have been replaced at some point because the truck was really nasty and this was fairly clean. And I checked it and no leaks. So that's what I'm going to use. That should be just fine for a big block on a run stand. Now this fan, I have no idea what this fan is from. It was leaning against the side of a Ford Explorer right uh, right next to the truck that I took that off. So I tested it, worked, I'm like, okay, fine. I checked all the part numbers. It's Bosch, made in the USA, so it's probably either an Audi, Mercedes, BMW, or uh, Volkswagen. So, I don't know. I just kind of briefly looked at the part numbers and didn't find anything, so I'm sure that's what it is. Anyway, so uh, you can see the little outlines here. Uh, of that that I, I'm actually going to put some rubber down to keep this thing from vibrating any holes in the fence right now how I'm going to attach it so you've got an area here that you can attach to so I'm just going to use these brackets these are one and a half inch uh, ever built from um, Home Depot drill a little hole in here and wallow this out just a little bit here and here and then here I had to bend that slightly I'm not going to show you putting the whole thing together again you might do something completely different so it does make sense to show you how to do something that you might not do so and there we go it's all installed nice and tight got the rubber all the way around here and uh and those mounted so rubber is just this stuff from home depot that's all it is all right there's a close-up of how i installed those very simple just Screws and nuts, screws and nuts, and it's quite solid. Just remember, when you drill the holes here, be really careful you don't nick that if you get this type of radiator. Oh, crap, I forgot to bolt that down. <laughs> I better do that. And then the screws are just uh, uh, 832 by 3 quarter machine screws. That's it. Let's bolt it right up. And of course, now i got to hook this up install it and I just realized that I don't have a radiator cap. So back to advanced auto Rileys. Something else to note when you're using junkyard parts. Dodge radiator, who knows what radiator fan, big block Chevy. Yeah, those are a little difficult to figure out. So this is what I did. I made uh, templates out of coat hangers and then I went to advanced auto Rileys and my buddy Matt let me go back in the back and uh, I got as close as I could using my templates. I'll have to cut um, one of those for the bottom one. This one should fit perfectly up top. And my lens is fogging up because it's so freaking humid. Okay, so again, uh, you know, you can choose the way you want to put it together yourself. Now, let's talk about the big block itself. This engine is actually a 73, and it's weird. What we think is that it was a warranty replacement block. Uh, 
Here, here's some of the numbers. Okay, so it came out of a 79 uh, C10. It was, not, it was not the original engine. Uh, and, and obviously it was orange. <laughs> so, and, and the guy he told me it wasn't. And it had not run for about six months prior to that because the guy uh, it was a beautiful 79 C. I think I have a picture. If I, if I still have that picture, I'll, I'll post it right here. Um, beautiful 79 C10 long bed four wheel drive. And uh, he blew up transfer case in it. And the guy I bought the engine from was an LS swap guy. And they put a 6.2 and, and a 6L80E and all that fun stuff. So, this engine was supposedly built just a few years ago. Now, I've got compression numbers, which may or may not say that, but the inside of that engine is so freaking clean. Here's a couple pictures. All right, so, and the valve cover's original. So, everything is date coded. Uh, June of 73, uh, the heads and the sticker on top of the um, valve cover, June of 73. So, this engine basically hadn't been fired up to last Sunday for about two years. And I was just so excited. The first thing we did is we ran a compression test, obviously. Now, I ran a compression test on a cold motor that hadn't been moved, really, you know, put a little oil in there and that kind of stuff, but it hadn't been started in almost two years. That was probably a mistake, and I probably need to go back, and I probably I will at some point go back and do another compression test. But here are the numbers. All right. Cylinder number, and this is in fire rate order. Cylinder number one, 150 PSI, which is right where you want it. Two, 140. Three, 130. Four, 150. Five, 140. Six, 145. Seven, 130. Eight, 140. Now, had I run this compression check after we ran this thing for 45 minutes last Sunday, I'll bet you those numbers are all close to 150 because basically you want to be around 150. So these numbers are really good. And <laughs> engine's healthy, man. <laughs> it's definitely got a cam in it, but it runs good. So I, I left the camera running during the entire time. My best friend Brian came over, and you've probably seen him in a few videos and everything. He he has a, a private uh, collection of about 36 or 37 cars now. <laughs> and he and, and this is something he's been working on. So we, we've known each other since we were little kids. And he works on his stuff. He's got six big block Chevys. And we are going to do a shop tour. And we're going to cover everything. All the cars and everything. The muscle cars, the Chevys, the Porsches, the Ferraris, everything. So we're going to do that this fall. So keep watching. But, so he came over and helped me get over the hump. Because I had so much little things left to do. There was no way I was going to get that thing fired up until 10 o'clock on Sunday night. And then my neighbors would kill me. <laughs> because this thing rattled the windows and scared my dogs. So, anyway, uh, here's some of the video from doing from uh, firing that puppy up. I just want to make sure everything is yeah. okay. Sounds good. Yeah, it does. Ready? Yep. So pretty cool, huh? <laughs> in fact, uh, I am going to um, I'm going to fire it up here in a few minutes, but I'm not going to put it on the video because I'm doing kind of a little tiny one uh, minute and a half movie uh, for Instagram. But I'm going to post my my little movie thing. <laughs> it's goofy. I, I was just having some fun. So uh, if you want to go check it out, it's just it's just it's silly. Okay, I know it's just silly, but it was fun to do. Uh, so go check out Instagram. 
it'll start out, you'll see my Navy Dad cap, okay, which I'm not wearing because I'm so sweaty. Uh, so go check it out. Um, here's my Instagram. Yeah, so anyway. All right, well, that's it for this one. Uh, next one, we will be back on Old Blue. We're going to start getting that engine cleaned up, and I'm going to get in the truck. So look forward to that. The next one's going to be back to Old Blue. Um, boys, you be safe out there. And it's still freaking hotter than hell, man. So um, I'm going to have me a beer. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.